The Occult Unveiled does not specifically endorse any medical claims made on the show, and listeners should consult a medical professional before making any informed decisions about their health. One of the biggest things in most African religion is that these spirits are ancestral spirits, are actually connected to your ancestors. And therefore, because they are connected to your ancestors, they are closer to the earth realm and can help you with issues that they've also been through. Hello, mystics, and welcome to the Occult Unveiled. I'm Ashley Ryan, and this week, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Sabri, a voodoo priestess and the owner of the Three Hoodoo Sisters store. Welcome, priestess. How are you? Hey, thank you for having me on. I'm honored to be here. I will go. Thank you. I'm very excited. This show is very special to me because one of my missions on hosting the Occult Unveiled is to debunk some of the misconceptions around occultism. And as we know, Voodoo and Voodoo has quite the reputation from Hollywood. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) American. Uh, what is it? American Horror Story. <laughs> yeah, they it really, really is. did a number on us. They they really did. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to try to fix some of it, but it's not a bad show. But it was interesting. It was we, interesting. Yeah, we'll definitely dive into that and all of the the Hollywood history. Um, but I want to offer you a tarot reading before we dive in. Okay, cool. All right. So for Get in the, my business. Yes. So I want you to focus on a situation in your life that you need clarity on. And I'm going to pull a three card spread, known, unknown, and current result. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so let me know when you have that in your mind's eye. Okay. So your first card, which is what you know is the moon. Ah, so you know what you don't know. There's a lot of shadows acting here. Things that are hiding in the subconscious, things that are going on in the dark. So intuition, listening and feeling to the vibrations around you, but also remember that we can be tricked. So do I would recommend doing some cleansings, making sure that we have a clear perspective of what's going on in this situation so we don't get clouded. Mm-hmm what you don't know. Ah, okay. So this is pretty unusual. Um, We haven't had this card pop up. The two of pentacles shows choices. And as there are two choices floating here, I pull two more cards to help you understand. The first one is ego. So there might be some ego at play here. And while having a healthy self-esteem is something that we want, we want to make sure that we're not tipping too far into pride. And choices. There's a lot of choices around you. So maybe you feel like you have to sacrifice certain things in your life in order to achieve this goal, and you will need to make a sacrifice. So between sacrificing parts of the ego and making good choices, again, we have that illusion. illusion. We're in the clouds here. That's why we need to keep you clear so you know what's going on in the situation. Your current outcome is the nine of wands reversed. You have the power. You, it's in you. And this is, you're so close to the finality of this, the situation. It's about finding that inner strength and that, that inner core energy that comes from spirit, that comes from ancestors, because wands represent your magic and no purpose. When you are moving into the, uh, the situation, move with spirit and that situation will be will be okay as we see it now. Oh, thank you. Yes. yes. I love it. Very accurate. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. It, 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 yeah, it gave me, yeah, I, I want what I want and I want it what I want. <laughs> I get so, it. Yeah, it's me. It's me having to, you know, like compromise and negotiate yeah. and that's, absolutely right you know i'm gonna keep private what i was asking about absolutely but you're right you are 100 right i do need to learn in this situation how to put what i what does everybody want or what does everybody need that is correct that is correct that thank you i needed that i needed that actually 
Oh, yeah. I'm so glad I could I could serve you. Um, so so as we were talking about uh, American Horror Story, um, okay. So which season are we talking about? Let's get real specific on like what my voodoo isn't. Season. <laughs> Which the one is Coven, that? like mm. that was my favorite season. It was the Coven. A H S. The third season of American Horror Story features voodoo as one of its central themes. And you know, it was based in New Orleans, and it was like New Orleans voodoo, which is connected to Haitian voodoo. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yes. And I think it was the misconception about Papa Legba. Papa Legba. Papa Legba is a spirit in the Afro-Cuban religion of voodoo, associated with communication and the crossroads. It was even somehow how even the mumbo in the, um, it, she, she had a very darker side to her, mm -hmm. you know, um, so... I just feel like they played more into the voodoo doll concept of it um, rather than showing more of the lighter aspect at times. Th right. There was a lot of darker aspects, which I think is what people think voodoo is. It's just magic and us poking voodoo dolls all day. Yeah, being, you know, there's like yeah. this unfortunate undercurrent that voodoo is this black magic or evil magic. And so... Voodoo. Okay, so that's another thing I want to ask. Is it voodoo or voodoo? When do I use these words and when is it appropriate? It's it's depending. You can use voodoo if you want to. You'll see voodoo used a lot for like New Orleans. Okay. Um, you'll see voodoo used. It depends. V o o d o o is like New Orleans voodoo. Mm -hmm. V o u d o u is normally Haitian voodoo. Okay. Um, or V U D U, it can be spelt differently. Um, but Voodoo can sometimes represent the umbrella. Okay. Of all types of voodoo. There's voodoo from Africa, there's right. voodoo from America, there's voodoo from the Caribbean. Voodoo is actually a wide umbrella. When we talk about all of these different locations, which obviously came over from the, the slave trade, unfortunately, and everything ch got changed. So is the voodoo in, in Haiti different than the voodoo in West Africa? Yes, the okay. voodoo in Haiti is a mixture of different tribes. So when the French brought over the slaves, a lot of them came from Togo, Cameroon, okay. Congo, especially Benin, where a lot of our spirits actually come from. While New Orleans voodoo has like Spanish, Native, Haitian, mm -hmm. it's, it's a mixture of things. Um, but it still took some deities from the Haitian influence. Um, but voodoo came, and also in voodoo, we also mixed Catholicism into right. it. That was the religion that we used to cover up our deities. Like, you know, over here, we have the Black Madonna, mm -hmm. which is really Ursula's Gontor in voodoo. So we had to find a way to practice. So we use the Catholicism as a foundation to kind of use to hide what we were practicing. So, yeah. Right. And yeah, that's a life saving measure to be able to veil the truth of what you're practicing. It's very occult. And yeah. so so you practice Haitian voodoo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like you actually went to Haiti to get initiated. That's incredible. Yes. I'm actually born in Haiti. I was born in Haiti. Both of my parents oh, are Haitian. Wow. Um, I wasn't raised in voodoo. I was raised in the Catholic church, which synchronizes mm -hmm. with voodoo. So, <laughs> you know, um, but I went to Haiti back in 2000. I'm trying to remember. Is it like 2016, 2017? Wow. And yeah, I went back home and I went and got initiated. And there's a concept also I want to like tell people you don't have yes. to go to Haiti to be initiated in Haitian voodoo. You can do it here. It's up mm -hmm. to you. I just chose to go to Haiti, but you can still do it here. Um, as long okay. as the mumbo, the, the priestess of the Hugan, the priests know what they're doing, you can do it here. Okay. Yeah, that's, you know, special and important to know. Like, luckily, I did not have to go across the world for my initiation. <laughs> I was able to be initiated in Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Homegrown, homegrown. Okay. Yeah. And so when we, when we go through initiation, like 
I had a lot of trials before I was initiated. Like I had to prove that I was ready to be initiated. You had that too, in some ways, didn't you? You, um, it was a lot of fear coming out. It was scary for me too. (laughs) I was like, what are you talking about? Um, there, you are never ready when spirit calls you or when Mm -hmm. spirit is asking you to change certain aspects of your life. I was like, hold on. I'm a paralegal. I'm doing me, (laughs) you know, everything is perfect. (laughs) I'm practicing hoodoo. I'm doing tarot readings. Everything Mm -hmm. is great. And they were like, no, it's time to go to the next level to serve more people. Um, this is not going to work. They literally turned my life upside down. Um, I was having problems at my job. I was having problems Mm -hmm. with my family. I was having problems with just crossing the street. (laughs) So were these your spirits, like your ancestors? Who who were these spirits? These were the Loas. Um, They they're not doing this as a form of punishment. They're doing this to get your your attention. Attention, shake it up into your higher calling. We all know because we're involved in the occult, that we have to have our tower moments Mm -hmm. in order to walk into the fool. Tower moment. A tower moment refers to the tarot card, a transformative and often sudden event that brings about the collapse of old structures and belief systems. You see what I'm saying? I absolutely do. They have to break you down to rebuild you where you had to make a choice. Yeah. And what are you going to do? Yeah. So what, what was the tipping point for you when you were like, I'm going to get off the cross now. I'm going to make action in my life. I wasn't happy at my job anymore. I was having problems mm-hmm. with my um, boss, just like very random problems. And I literally had a dream and it was kind mm-hmm. of like, quit your job and mm-hmm. go to Haiti or else you'll regret it. And I just told my boss, look, I'm going to Haiti for two weeks. And he was like, I can't do that. And Mm -hmm. I had another dream and they said, quit. We'll take care of you. You'll be fine. Okay. A leap of faith. It was literally just a leap leap of faith. faith. Yeah. I got tired. I got tired of going, being hangman. I said, well, I'll take that tower moment. I I, I, I was tired. I was tired of going through all of these trials you know, where eventually you have to submit to spirit in order to go to the next level. Everybody's form of submitting is not the same. Mine's was quitting my job. That was a sacrifice, you know, (laughs) to move forward. Yeah. Yeah, Mine was coming out very publicly about my practice. No one Mm. really knew about my practice, except if you were like my very close friend. Um, And in 2019, um, I became, you know, TikTok famous. And I was like, Oh, my family's going to find out about this. I uh, better start preparing. (laughs) Can I ask you a question? What did you become initiated in? So I can't share the name of the group, but I can say that it is a hermetic order. Okay. Okay. I respect that. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. Has it changed your life? Girl, (laughs) my life is so different now. And I think that like I was working um, like as a production assistant, as a personal assistant. And this was so like, I was like, oh, this is like what I do when I'm at home and nobody knows that like I'm conjuring spirits in my bedroom. And then. uh, (laughs) (laughs) That's how it starts off for a lot of us secretly doing things in our bedroom. Yes. 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 (laughs) Yes. And when I, I had my tower moment is when I quit my job and started teaching online. And I also had to come out to the world. And that's my my internal family, my extended family, and be like, this is who I am. I'm here to heal. I'm here to love. I'm here to show the world dedication back to the divine. And uh, that was really scary. (laughs) It is scary. It is scary. But look where you are now. Like exactly. making people aware, enlightening them, mm-hmm. putting them on their path. I will go. That's beautiful. I love Thank it. You. I love Thank it. You. But when you said start off in your room, oh my God, which 101, yeah. I call it which 101. <laughs> yes. We all start off in our rooms, reading books and trying to mix things and trying to figure yep. out. Yes. Very true. Very yes. true. 
So Priestess, I want to ask you, why are you wearing all white today? What does this represent? Oh, all white represents the ancestors. It represents the ancestral spirits. It represents the healing aspect of voodoo, which is funny. If you if you actually go to Haiti, like 70% of the time, they're just doing a lot of healing work. A lot of mm. um, healing people from medical issues. Wow. White re- represents a lot of our water spirits, like the Dumbala. It represents La Sirene. I call it the Ariel, the Little Mermaid. <laughs> a oh. lot of water, a lot of healing energies, um, mm-hmm. a lot of higher powers. Because we do have higher powers in voodoo. I tell people nothing in voodoo closes or ends without a prayer. Mm-hmm. Okay? <laughs> so people think it's just all black magic. No, a majority of it is a lot of prayer, a lot of invocation, a lot of calling on our ancestral spirits from Guinea, f- from Africa, a lot of calling on the Dumbala, Papa Loco, the higher spirits. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, like- that's where I wear white. Yeah, I wear white, I wear red, I wear black. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That's pretty much my wardrobe too. Not so much the white because I'm I'm messy and I know I'm gonna get it dirty and that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so when you're talking to these spirits, if I was going to help our Western listeners understand, you're like calling yeah. upon like archangels and angels to come down and assist you in healing. Hmm. What people don't understand is that the spiritual realm is open to helping you. Like Mm -hmm. you can, it's just that wearing certain colors helps you to vibrate on a certain level. Like if you take the voodoo out of it, white just helps you to vibrate with higher powers and higher ancestors. So basically this color calls on certain types of spirits. It attracts certain types of spirits. It's a magnet to certain types of spirits. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you also protecting your crown chakra? Oh, sorry. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yeah. It actually crown. It also represents the third eye. It's the higher powers. Okay. It's the higher. Okay. And I just want to say, I'm not speaking about like, oh, if you were all black, you're attracting lower powers. No, you're attracting Mm-mm. more earthly powers. Right. Protection. You know? Yeah. So not saying white is the better color. I'm saying that Mm-mm. this color attracts a certain type of energy. And yes, you're right. Thank you for saying angels. I would like to dispel that myth. Okay. In Haitian voodoo, we do work with the archangels. We do work with mm-hmm. angels. We do a lot of our healing work with angels. Yes. Especially with demonic possessions, we will call mm-hmm. on Archangel Michael. We sure will. Yeah. Archangel Michael, a part of the Abrahamic religions, Archangel Michael is a symbol of strength, courage, and protection. He is believed to be a fierce defender against evil forces and a guardian of humanity. Thank you. You're very welcome. You know, that's like why we're here today. And I'd love to talk more about what you do as a voodoo priestess. What is your role in the community? My role, literally the loas, certain loas stay closer to the earth realm to help people with their everyday life and their everyday Mm -hmm. problems. To some people, I'm a doctor. To some people, I'm a lawyer. To some people, I'm the grand magician. I'm their counselor. We are here to to simply help. Um, It's it's not one of those ego things where I'm the queen of this or I'm the blah, 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 blah. No, it's literally how can I serve you? How can I help you? Are you having problems in conception? Are you having Mm -hmm. problems in your marriage? Are you having... Or do you sometimes just need a reality check to move forward? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, We are here to serve. Like one Mm. thing the Loas have taught me is that you are not above God. No. No. We are not above above God. We are also the Loas are like, we are also servants of God. We, we, we are here to help who we can help in the best way possible by using herbs, invocations, prayers, powders. How can I help you? It's like, how can I be of service to our community? In voodoo, one of the biggest things that we do, and nobody talks about this, we actually are big advocates of community and family. Feeding the homeless is big. How can you help people is the biggest Mm -hmm. question. Right. Because the Loas, they just want to help. 
that they just want to help who they can help. They also want to, to protect people. How can we protect you? I, I get a lot of people who come to me who are dealing with stalkers, like crazy ex-boyfriends, like employees, their boss harassing them, you know, coming and trying to help out in a situation where people feel helpless. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I, yeah. I do. I do um, a lot of work with domestic violence and helping remove people from each other. <laughs> you know, that's their mm-hmm. will yeah. and they need As help with that. Mm-hmm. As you should. Yeah. I want to just go back because we're doing a lot of clarifying here, which is great. So when we talk about God, priestess, what are you referring to? What is the essence of God in this context? In voodoo, we call, okay, it's like bon Dieu. It's God, okay? So God is up there. So the concept is, is that God is too busy doing other things, you know? Like he's watching, but he's too busy doing other things. So Mm -hmm. therefore I've created deities and certain energies, your ancestral energies, like, you know, Ursa, Sully, Dantor, and all of these other loas and angels and spirit guides closer to the earth realm to help you out. So, hey, call on them. I'm still God. I'm still watching. But hey, you got your ancestors, your angels, your Orishas, your everything. Call on them. They'll help you out. <laughs> that's oh, that's so concept. interesting. You know, that's kind of similar to my worldview is that mm-hmm. at the top, you know, the angels, the saints, the the earthly realm, helpers, spirit guides, etc. They are the messengers of spirit or the messengers of the creator. Creator has other creator things to do, right? Like leave the administrative yeah, tax. Yeah. yeah. He's busy creating I, other universes. Like he's busy. Call on them. <laughs> Call on them real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We share that in common. Um, that's the um, fun fact, the deist, that's what that's called is D de- in, in a Western tense it calls deist where God creates and spins the top and then puts his hands up and says, busy, BRB. I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> busy and there's this concept in african religion that our ancestors are very played a part in the creation of these deities to help them in their daily life one of the biggest things in most african religion is that these spirits are ancestral spirits are actually connected to your ancestors and therefore because they are connected to your ancestors they are closer to the earth realm and can help you with issues that they've also been through i can identify with your pain and problem because i've been through it god is mm-hmm. busy he's still watching but let me help you because i can uh, understand how to help you navigate through this you see what i'm saying right so if we're thinking of the spirit as the universe as the creative force you Mm -hmm. as a priestess have the communication with the spirit realm and because you're um through initiation your soul and aura etc has certain special qualities to it that allow you to have that communication and i think that's beautiful i think that's what a priestess truly is yeah, we're communicators of the spiritual realm. I signed a mm-hmm. contract. I said I would help. And it's not a contract that anybody can sign. They have to call you. And you I know when you're you. being called because your life is miserable <laughs> until you sign that contract. And it's not a bad contract, you know. <laughs> but yeah. it is scary. It's a it's a like you said before, it's a full card, a leap of faith. Yeah. This is spirituality. You can't see these spirits. It's it's all based upon faith. You just said it, faith. Yeah, it's faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. faith is a dirty word in a lot of context in the postmodern era. <laughs> Why do you think it's a dirty word? Tell me. Um, I got to hear this. I think a lot of Westerners think that faith is like means we have to give up science. And that's not true. Science and magic can coexist together. They're two sides of the same coin. Science explains the universe through the nature that is measurable. And spirituality is through symbology and through extrasensory context. I think that's what, I think that's what, it's crazy because voodoo works with science. We work with herbs. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Tell me more about that. Yeah. Where, where do pharmacies get, <laughs> they get them from herbs? If you Mm -hmm. go to Haiti, like like how I was saying, like 70% of the problems are medical problems because we have a broken healthcare system. 
So people come there when they're having gout, they're having stomach issues, feet swelling up, that their blood is all over the place. There are certain herbs, like you'll find a hugon or mumbo. A lot of the times they're growing herbs, like big herb mm-hmm. gardens, like a pharmaceutical. Wow. And what you do That's is, is that certain herbs represent certain deities. And these deities can work through certain problems. I don't, I mean, I'm always like, why do you think God has doctors and lawyers? They also have a spiritual aspect. They're here. This is their spiritual gift. They're here to assist you in this aspect of your life. I agree. Science does prove spirituality. Like, I completely agree. A lot of the times, like, if you go in my backyard, I have a garden. And (gasps) there's certain plants that have certain healing properties. You see what I'm saying? And work with certain wives. So, yeah. Yeah. No, you were like, I don't like the word faith. (laughs) I was like, okay. So what word do you use? Because now I'm like... I use the word faith. I think other Westerners don't like that word. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen people, you know, especially living in Los Angeles, there's a lot of atheists, a lot of agnostics. There are. There are. And you know what? I'm cool if you're an atheist. I believe people believe what they want to believe. You see what I'm saying? Due to life experiences. It's where they're at. That's their consciousness. And that's. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that perspective. It may change. It may not. Yeah. The universe will literally work with whatever you believe in, you know? So it's Mm -hmm. like, whatever. Yeah. So I'm curious. So people come to Haiti to get medical treatments um, from spiritual practitioners. Do they ever have to go to the, the doctor doctor? They normally come to us once they've been to the doctor doctor. (laughs) Oh, wow. Once so been, that's the 20 doctors had 10 surgeries. It's still not working. Sometimes it's not an actual physical sickness. It's a spiritual sickness. Interesting. Um, in Haiti, if you've been to doctors, they'll tell you to go see somebody who can help you in the spiritual sense. Can you give me an example for our audience? Like what is um, something that's happened? Like someone who's had gout. What is that a spiritual symptom of? Gout is normally a symptom of just straight witchcraft. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's oh. literally, yes, gout is literally something about the body blowing up in an unnatural way where you've run all types of tests or you've tried what should have helped you. That That is normally an actual spiritual at- attack to try to make you not be able to walk, to try to make, t- because if you can't walk, what are you going to do? Sit around. You cannot go and support y- yourself. A lot of the times, normally we'll tell people, have you been to the doctor? Yes, I've been to the doctor. I've been to all of these doctors. Normally, it's a spiritual attack. It's somebody, a lot of the times, it's a zombification. It's some type of spirit that they sent out of the graveyard. It's normally not demonic. It's normally graveyard spirits. Spirits that died of a similar sickness, of a similar handicap. You see what I'm saying? And it attaches itself to that limb. This is the sucky part. Because you've had it for so long, most people let it get bad and it's not their fault. Now you got to really go out there and get the herbs, get the medicinal. Then you have to pull the spiritual aspect of it. You got to call on the the loas, the angels and the ancestors to get rid of whatever this lower energy is. So now you got to use both aspects because now a spiritual issue has turned into an actual physical issue. Yeah. So there's a lot of interesting things you just talked about. Like people are doing witchcraft against other people. Yeah. Like that's intense, right? So like that kind of plays back into the thing we were talking about at the very beginning of this, which was the Hollywood aspect where there's negative magic being done on people. So that does exist. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes it, wow. It is. <sighs> I'm trying to see how to say this. Yeah. yeah. That's why we are trained on how. Oh, OK, this is the part of voodoo that people don't understand. Yes, in voodoo, we work with demons. Yes, in voodoo, Mm -hmm. we work with graveyard spirits. Yes, we work with, with, with very lower vibrational energies. Why do we do this? 
because mm-hmm. it takes a certain type of energy to take on a certain type of energy. Yes, I work with demons. Why not? I have to because sometimes I have to send a demon to get rid of your crazy boyfriend or I have to send a demon to get rid of whatever this crazy witchcraft somebody just put on you. So you have to learn the nature of these energies. Yes, they are complex energies, but you Mm -hmm. have to learn how to deal with them to work with complex spiritual situations or heavy in working, we'll say heavy. This is a very heavy spiritual situation. I know what situation. you're talking about. Mm-hmm. You, you, yeah. It's you dense. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So in, in the Western tradition, we would say like it's a dense energy. So it's lower or terrestrial or even yes. chthonic or underworld. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So we have to learn. People fear. I think spirituality has dumped so much positivity that people think that if you know how to work with heavier energies, you're you're evil. No, the universe has darkness and it has light. You have to know how to balance both out. You have to learn how to work with both. What are you going to do? You know, you can't be all love and light, unicorns. I agree. I agree 100%. But what if something heavy hits you? What are you going to do? You, you, you know? got to be able to, to be able to remove it. Yeah. I, I, I completely understand. <laughs> yeah. I, I've also worked with the infernal and I know that those, there's times where energies like that are necessary. Um, I, I like Thank what you, you said, Yes, like it's using the darkness to further the good. Cause you're not you as a priestess, you're not sending demons out to hurt others, but you have to fix no. situations. No, a lot of the times when you're sending heavy energy, because sometimes even priests and priestesses battle. Let's be honest. That's true. It's absolutely true. Negative energies to push somebody back, Mm -hmm. you know, to push them back, to make them go away. One of the biggest things my godparents told me when I got initiated, I asked them, is voodoo good good or bad? He says, voodoo is what you make it. We work Mm. with all the spirits. We work with all the energies. Just because you're a pastor doesn't mean you're good. Just yeah. because just because you're a uh, imam in Islamic faith, yeah. it's what you do with it. You know, you can either it, it's how you use it. Yes, you're allowed to produce demons, but not to send it to innocent people is to actually fight back or to remove certain things. Demons are very like demons is like working with like the mob. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. What do you yeah. need done? What do you need done? Well, here's what I need done. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, here's what I'm here's what I'm gonna need. And you're like, okay, da 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 da. Bam. Totally. They do it yep. and then you pay them and then they go about their business. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And absolutely. Yeah. So sometimes what we think is bad, it's not necessarily evil. It's it has a certain nature that we may find evil, but it's not. It's you gotta know how to handle. I find it very scary when people tell me they bought demonology books. They're teaching you how to bring it, but they're not teaching you how to send it back, which is a major problem I have in the spiritual community that there's a lot of these high magic, do this, do that, but they don't teach you how to retract. They don't teach you how to face. They don't teach you how to control. Yeah. Don't summon up what you can't put down. Which a lot of these books show you how to summon, but you don't know how to put it down. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. And that's so strange because some people, honestly, like they want to do the fun, cool, sexy stuff, but don't want to do the basic cleansings and cleanings and protection work. No. People Magic is a lifestyle. Spirituality is McDonald's. Have it your way. <gasps> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it is not at all. It's There's not a, a, some, a practice. Yeah, certain spiritual conditions can take months to heal or even years. You know, Mm. um, you have to be patient on this journey. Um, A lot of people think you you just buy some sage and some Florida water and you're cured of your ancestral issues. It's not a quick fix like that. No. Spirituality is a journey. It is not a quick fix. And it's one you have to commit to. It's one you have to have faith in. And again, we get back to that part where people... The, the discipline isn't there to do that. And it's too bad because imagine how much better our world would be if people took spirituality a little more seriously and not as a convenience. Yeah. 
I just feel like people feel like I'm going to become really spiritual because you can play with fairies and mermaids. And I'm like, they're bad fairies. They're, they're yeah. all like there's actually rules and structure in the spiritual realm. And a lot of people ignore that and they just think it's a free for all. You know, spirituality is actually here to help you to balance and to um put a solid foundation down. And I meet a lot of people who think it's a playground. These spirits are not here to play with you. <laughs> There's no. some fairies and gnomes that can mess you up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, like, like, yeah. Like absolutely. People, yeah. It's a free for all. You know, so sometimes when you try to give people structure, they run away because they mm-hmm. think that's not what spirituality is. spirituality wants you to deal with your bullshit. Excuse my language. Spirituality. Wants no, you I to love deal that. With the trauma. Spirituality wants you to deal with what is really hurting you so that you can become a better person. I already told God, I don't want to do this again. I want to evolve and chill out in the spiritual realm for a few hundred years. If you thought, I don't want to come back totally. immediately. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I feel the same way. I'm going to tell you something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sometimes as priestesses or practitioners, we think we're always right because spirit yeah, is always pouring a lot of correct information into us. So this year I've had to really learn, no, you're not always right. Sometimes you have to learn to see things from other people's perspective. And so I'm seeing that, okay, that's a lesson. And this is an opportunity for me to evolve. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So I, yeah. I appreciated your reading because it, it, it was right. I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. I, I understand too, you know, like I've had to learning to be internet famous has been challenging. People will take things you yeah. say and twist it and, and make it something that it's not. And then all of a sudden you get, you get called these horrible names and you're like, whoa, how did it turn into this and take responsibility and say, okay, I did something you didn't like. And I, I accept that. I accept that maybe I was wrong. Maybe that's something that I shouldn't have shared online. That's just not their reality at that moment of their life yeah. or ever will be. When people attack me, I, I I know we follow each other. I have a very strong way. I'm very strong and I'm very opinionated about what I have to say. And so mm-hmm. people have very strong opinions about me or towards me. But at the end of the day, I'm here to serve spirit. I'm tired mm-hmm. of this fantasy of spirituality when it can be used mm-hmm. to change your life rather than being used as a playground. I can't like, I'm tired of that. It's and, a system. It's a system yeah. you need to work through. And it's a practice. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. I had to deal with a lot of childhood trauma, like a lot of trauma from my parents, cultural trauma. No, you need to do this. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Like I had to break through a lot of things in order to, to just be able to help people. Because there was a time where th- they were like, nope, you can't help anybody but yourself. Like You can do some readings, but you cannot mm-hmm. like go around you're not in a place, a healed place where you can give that healing back. I get it. I get it. No. And sometimes they'll even come to me and say, you're out of order. Yeah. You know, um, pull back, take a break. We, we, mm-hmm. we need breaks sometimes. We get tired, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, and your humanness seeps in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like pull back. Yeah. It's a, it's a constant evolution. And I, that's what yeah. I love what you said. Yeah. So I, I want to talk about some of the tools that we see used in voodoo. We see some Catholic tools used. Um, is, I'm sure they have like secret meanings, right? <laughs> yeah. A lot of the um, Catholic tools that we use, this is what's weird about voodoo. I don't think it's weird, but interesting. Sometimes it really is a saint. Like, so Saint okay. Expedite can represent Baron, one of the spirits in the graveyard, you know, in mm-hmm. death, because the get it is barren. It represents the whole graveyard aspect, the underworld dying, which is not seen as a bad thing, but we may mm-hmm. just really be using St. Expedite. <laughs> okay. So we can like, we may just really be using an actual saint, you see? Wow. Um, okay. Or we may, I may really be working with the black Madonna and not the Dantor. Black Madonna a sacred figure in Christian iconography where the Virgin Mary is represented with dark skin. We use a lot of the um, the frankincense and myrrh to mm-hmm. cleanse. 
do you know in voodoo, you really shouldn't start a ceremony without cleansing with frankincense and myrrh? So yeah. we use frankincense and myrrh. We use the Hail Marys, the Our Fathers, the Lord's Prayer to clear and to invoke the ancestral spirits. You see what I'm saying? I'm I like, do. Yeah, we use holy water. <laughs> mm-hmm. We use holy water to help our clients. Um, we use, I'm trying to think, um, a lot of mumbos, especially a lot of older mumbos are devout clients or devout Catholics. I'm sorry, are devout Catholics. They go to the Catholic church regularly. They like clients. They light candles for their clients. Like wow. they do prayers. So Mary La- Laveau was a mm-hmm. devout Catholic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we understand prayer is very powerful. We mm-hmm. understand the power of prayer. It it catches the, the attention of spirits. It catches the, it the attention of the universe. Like we understand that. So yeah, yeah um, we use a lot of Catholicism. We work with saints like crazy. I work with Saint Barbara. I work with Saint Expedite. I work with Saint Joseph to find women husbands. The mm. saints are very active and they're very here to serve. I love working with saints. They will mm. actually really get the job done. Yeah, certain <laughs> saints are kind of like don't really want to work. <laughs> bougie. They're, like, they're, they're little like, yeah, I know what you mean. They're like, the bougie spirits are like, mm, nah, mm. too complicated. And then <laughs> we have St. Jude who really is going around doing a lot of miracles. St. John mm. the Baptist, like very active energies. I tell mm. people, look, if you don't want to get too deep into, into certain things, work with the Catholic saints. Find three. I think it's good to find three that you really work well with and they'll actually help clients, but they will help people. They'll even help you. They're service of God. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the saints are very powerful. When I was a child, I went to Catholic school for 12 years. <laughs> And, <laughs> and, and we didn't celebrate Halloween in Catholic school. We celebrated All Saints Day on November yes, All 1st. All Saints Day, yes. Day, yeah. So I would dress up as a saint every year. Uh, you know, as a child, you do it to like fifth grade. And my favorite was St. Rose of Lima because I was so yes. amazed that this woman would rub pepper on her face and her eyes and like deform herself so she wouldn't be desirable to men. And I was like, holy cow whoa you went hardcore girl i don't know if i want blisters on my face they were very some of these saints were very like centered on discipline i mean disciplined on you know connecting with god only god nobody else (laughs) yeah nobody else yeah i'm okay so catholic team yes i went to catholic school shout out to saint rose and chelsea you know, yes, praying that rosary, praying. Yeah, we, we went to mass that. every Friday. Oh yeah. my God, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Haven't yeah. you? One thing I've noticed about Catholicism is very mystical. Like it has very mystical. So absolutely, I've a lot of people who are in spirituality were Catholic. Like, there's a yes, lot of that. I've seen that too. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of us. Who, yeah. I was curious, you know, it's hard right now because in a lot of ways, magic is, is everywhere. Spirituality is everywhere. And I believe that it's available and open to people, but I think it requires a great amount of discipline to be able to be proficient and to be, uh, how do I put this? Hmm. To be a good magician. To be someone who's not in it just for the ego purposes, not just for the money. But I'm curious, what do you think? How do you see spirituality? I see spirituality as the foundation of your life. It changed my life. Um, Spirituality made me focus on not what I want, but what is best for me in this life. That is what spirituality is. Spirituality told me. Like you just said, in order to get to where you want to be, you have to be disciplined and you have to have consistency. In order to be a voodoo priestess, you have to learn certain invocations. You have to learn certain prayers. You have to learn days, foods, (laughs) like, like, like all it's like, it's not a, 
It's not, this is not for fun. This is to help to change your life and other people's life. Spirituality is not a game. It's a way of life. You see what I'm saying? I do. Your I do. And I agree with air, you. Your shelter. It's, it's what gives you that solid foundation in your life. This is not a joke. Spirituality is life changing, you know? Yeah. Or life ruining for some people. You know why real. I'm not on TikTok? Because it's a Please. lot of people who don't know what they're doing. Um, I was over it when I saw people arguing about should you have an ancestral altar in your bathroom? I mean, it's just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just over it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, there's a lot of people. There's another thing in spirituality. I tell people, try to find mentors, try to find godparents, try to find people who can yeah. help to hold your hand. I've been blessed to have many teachers, you know, and they weren't scared to tell me, yo, that was effed up. That was wrong. You should not have done that spiritually. That yeah. could have caused a huge portal to bust open. Like nobody, the, there's so many books out there that people think they know everything and they don't have a elder. You know, I do offer a mentorship program. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? For people who are trying to do things the correct way rather than just reading a book and just saying, well, I'm a priestess now or <laughs> I'm a hoodoo worker. I'm yeah. a conjurer. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And I agree with you. I think that, you know, we're, we've seen the quite literally the portal of spirituality blow open the last 100 years. And yeah. now it's time to start taking responsibility and using it ethically and being mature about its use. But I think that's a big ask for the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I think God is calling a lot of us. Uh, I just tell people God is simple. We're complicated. God wants you to use your gifts to heal. You know what I'm saying? But we've chose to e e either ignore our gifts, abuse our gifts. We don't want to know what our higher purpose is because higher purpose means accountability. It means responsibility. It means consistency. So that's why in my tarot readings and my mentorships, I even have a tarot deck, a Ursula Fuera tarot deck that tells you the reality of your love life. And I'll send yeah. you one. I'll send it to you. I forgot. I was supposed to send you one. I'm sorry. But it, good. it reveals the truth and what you need to do to heal yourself rather than saying, oh, he's your twin flame and everything's going to be okay. No. Yes, no. Thank you. Stop using spirituality as escapism. And voodoo had to deal with a lot of the harsh realities of a freed people coming out of slavery who had to free themselves. So the, the laws were of service to help people, not only that, but to help to, to establish a whole nation of Haiti. The laws helped to establish a freed, we were the only freed black people in, in the Western hemisphere. You see what mm -hmm, I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so I do. I, yeah. They, we had to rely on our deities in order to help us to rebuild a whole new nation and to try to sustain ourselves. This is the purpose of the spirituality. This is the purpose mm. of it. Thank you so okay. much, Priestess. <laughs> no, that was beautiful. I really appreciate what you said here today. You have no, really helped. Thank you. Help thank you. <laughs> For having me. And can you tell our listeners where they can find you online? We know you're not on TikTok. <laughs> I'm there, but I barely post. Um, you can find <laughs> me at Three Hoodoo Sisters, T H R E E. Hoodoo, H-O-O-D-O-O, -O -O, sisters, S-I-S-T-R-S. -S. You can find, I, I have a few scammer pages, but but, but it's not me. <laughs> you know, okay, yeah. you'll see a picture of me in a red dress. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube. Um, you can find me there. I have my new Oracle deck. I have a mentorship program. Um, just trying to spread the reality. Somebody call me a spiritual gangster and I'll be a spiritual gangster just, just spreading the reality. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah. And until next time, mystics, stay magical. Bye. I will go. <laughs> <laughs>The Occult Unveiled is produced by F Street Productions and M is for Magic. Our executive producers are Ashley Ryan, Michael A. Simon, and Scott Kushner. Our show is produced by Deborah Simon. Our audio producer is Bill Schultz. Our talent booker is Perry Turcott. Laura Kaufman is our coordinator. 
Thank you for listening. And for more information on any of the topics you heard today, plus really cool links and ways to learn about Ashley, Pythian, and all of our guests, go to the occultunveiled.com website. The Occult Unveiled, copyright 2023.